welcome back to another video on my channel. I know that when you guys are going to be watching this, it is no longer October, which means it is no longer Halloween season. But because of my wisdom teeth and the fact that I missed a few videos in October, I'm going to keep my Halloween setup just for a little bit longer. Also, today's video was a video that I planned on doing in October for the Halloween type of themed videos. But unfortunately, I missed this video and I really, really wanted to get it up for you guys. So today I'm going to be sharing it with you guys and I hope that you enjoy it. So with that all being said, let's get right into today's video. James Clifford Carson, better known as Michael Bear Carson's exact date of birth is unknown. But it is believed that he was born sometime in the 1950s. For the beginning of the video, I will be referring to him as James, and by the end of the video, I will be referring to him as Michael, but I will give you guys a warning when I'm going to switch over. Anyways, by 1977, James was now living in Phoenix, Arizona with his first wife and their young daughter, Jennifer. Now, in this year, his first wife started to notice some very, very concerning behavior going on with James. So concerning, actually, that one night while James was asleep, she packed Jennifer up into her car and drove away, leaving James for good. James that his first wife had known and loved was the type of guy that would be really, really concerned about the fact that his wife and daughter just walked out on him. He would want to know where they were and want to make sure that they were safe. But because James was so gone at this point, he didn't even care, seemingly. He just went on with his life. And around this time is when he met a woman by the name of Susan Barnes. Now, Susan Barnes was also recently divorced, and she was a mother of two teenage boys. James and Susan really hit it off right off the bat. They quickly became romantically involved, and even quicker than that, they actually went on to be married. And shortly after they were married, the couple packed up and went to travel Europe for around two years. And after they ran out of money, they were forced to come back to the States. And that is when they decided that they were now going to move to California. They moved to Height Ashbury in San Francisco, and this area is actually known to be quite a popular place for hippie culture at that time. So the couple were already participating in drugs. They started taking heavy drugs together, which again was a very popular thing that was being done in the hippie times. So um, they were doing that, and at this time they also started to practice kind of mysticism. At this time, one day during a drug trip, the couple decided that both of them were going to change their names. Now Susan's name was Susan, S-U-S-A-N, but she decided to change it from Susan spelt like that to Susan spelt S-U-Z-A-N, and they both would be going by the last name Bear, and James would now change his name to Michael. So for the rest of the video, I'm going to be referring to James as Michael. The couple at this point was extremely delusional and had somewhat of their own religion going on. They were super, super against witchcraft, homosexuality, abortions, anything like that, and they actually referred to themselves as vegetarian Muslim warriors. They believed that anybody who was partaking in these things that they were so strongly against was so bad that they actually deserved to die. And they thought that when these people passed away, these people who were practicing witchcraft or homosexuality or getting abortions or things like that, they thought that when they died, it was actually making the country better. And they believed that they were being told all of this information from a higher power. So like I mentioned, while traveling in Europe, the couple had ran out of money, which kind of forced them to move back to the States. So because they were low on their funds and everything like that, when they moved back to California, they actually had to move in with a roommate. They moved in with a young girl, 23-year-old Karen Barnes, who I don't believe has any relation to Susan. Karen had actually moved to California to follow her dreams of being an actor, but she fell into the hippie lifestyle and was kind of just too caught up in that at that time to follow her actual dreams. After moving in with Karen, the couple quickly decided that they wanted Karen to be Michael's second wife. But Karen was much smarter than this. She knew that this was a really bad idea and she did not believe in the couple's religious beliefs. They did not share that at all. And she knew that they were kind of off and a little bit delusional. So she kindly declined this offer and this just set the couple right off. More importantly, it set Susan right off. This made the relationship between the three roommates very, very hostile, and Susan actually started to state that she believed that Karen was a witch. On March 6th of 1981, while out and about, Susan claimed that she actually got orders from up above directing her to kill Karen. She said that this was confirmed by the fact that when she would say that Karen was a witch and she needed to die, 
thunder would clap every single time. So the couple planned to kill Karen and when they returned home from their day out, they proceeded to do just that. They stabbed her 13 times and then smashed her face in with a frying pan. The couple then fled the scene before the body was even discovered. Karen's body was discovered by police the following day, March 7th of 1981. Now when police discovered Karen's body, they noticed that on the wall surrounding where her body was discovered, there were strange drawings just absolutely everywhere. They weren't particularly satanic or anything like that, they were just weird. And oddly enough, Susan had actually signed her name under each one. Some websites that I've come across have stated that it was um, Karen's mother, but other websites that I've come across have actually stated that it was one of Karen's friends, so that is a little bit unclear, but somebody had actually informed law enforcement about Karen's strange roommates, Susan and Michael. But due to the fact that Susan and Michael had both changed their names, it was very, very difficult for police to track them down. They didn't know that Michael was also James, and they didn't know that Susan had changed the spelling of her name, so it just made the the whole entire situation that much more difficult. After fleeing the scene, Susan and Michael hitchhiked up north in California to way northern California where they came across a, an abandoned cabin where they lived there for a total of an entire year, only leaving to get supplies and food. But after living in this cabin for a year, the couple became bored and they wanted more from life, so they decided that they hid out for long enough and they were now going to go back to the more busier areas of California. And after doing this, they started to work at a marijuana farm. I believe that Michael was working there as a guard and Susan was working as a gardener. Working at the farm seemed to go well for the couple for a little while until they came across 26-year-old Clark Stevens. Now Clark was a very good friend of the farm owner and he did some work on the farm for the owner because they were such good friends. But Clark liked to drink a lot and he did drink quite a lot on a regular basis and when he was drunk he became very loud which seemed to really really irritate Susan. On one occasion Susan had actually been so annoyed with Clark that she tried to block him from entering the farm. Now this really really angered Clark and he began to really yell and cuss at Susan which really really angered her and some people believe that this is what led the couple to believe that Clark was a witch but Michael would later come out and say that he believed that Clark had actually been sexually assaulting Susan and that is why the couple decided to kill him. In May of 1982 Michael would go on to kill Clark Stevens by shooting him directly in the face. The couple then brought the body out to the woods where they tried to burn it before then again fleeing to that cabin in Northern California. Two weeks after the couple had killed Clark, he was then reported missing, I believe actually by the owner of the marijuana farm. And police quickly discovered his body, and after discovering his body, Michael and Susan became the number one suspects in this murder case as well, because while going through their things, the police actually found that the couple had left behind a handwritten manifesto. And in this manifesto was a list of celebrities who the couples just didn't approve of. They thought they were practicing in witchcraft, and this included the president at the time, Ronald Reagan. Again, during this time, the police had a very, very difficult time tracking the couple down. They were back in that cabin in Northern California, and they only really left the cabin again to come to town to get supplies and food and things like that. But one day in November of 1982, someone had actually spotted Michael hitchhiking, and they called police. So Michael was arrested and brought in, but due to an incident or something that the police did wrong, he was actually released and wasn't even questioned. Then in March of 1983, the couple would leave the cabin to hitchhike into town. I believe it was close to Bakersfield, California, and they would get picked up by a man by the name of John Charles Hellyer. And John would was talking with the couple and they, everything was going normally until for whatever reason the couple decided that John was a witch. Now the exact reason why they decided this is unclear, but it has been speculated that John had accidentally touched Susan's leg. After the couple decided that John was a witch, they quickly got into an argument with him, which really, really quickly turned into a physical altercation. So John pulled over to the side of the road because he wasn't able to drive anymore. Both John and Susan were hitting each other and Michael was hitting John and it was just a big mess so he had to pull over to the side of the road. Once pulled over to the side of the road, the three got out of the vehicle where the fight continued and Susan at some point had gotten a knife and began to stab John. Now somewhere in this altercation, John had actually 
pulled out a gun, but due to the fact that there was two of the bears and he had been stabbed, the couple very easily overpowered him and Michael ended up with the gun. He then proceeded to shoot John and kill him. Even crazier than all of this craziness that was going on with the couple is that this fight actually went on beside a very, very busy California highway with many, many witnesses who called police. Police quickly arrived at the scene where there was a short speed chase between Susan, Michael, and the police, but eventually they caught up to them and Susan and Michael were both arrested. After first being arrested, the couple agreed to plead guilty for the three murders as long as they got a televised conference that would go live on the TV. And the couple was given this conference and in this conference they talked about how they had no remorse for murdering the three three victims that they had killed. They said that they were witches and they talked about their strange and alarming religious beliefs. Not only that, but after being given the TV conference where they did sit and talk about all of this crazy stuff, they then went on to plead not guilty. As you have probably guessed throughout this video, the couple actually was convicted of all three of the murders and both were given 75 years to life in prison. After being arrested and while the trial was going on, the couple was actually dubbed the San Francisco Witch Killers or the California Witch Killers. Even more horrifyingly, in 2015, Michael had actually cancelled his parole hearing because he still strongly believed everything that he believed at the beginning of this when he was first arrested and he had zero remorse for any of his victims. Susan was actually obviously denied parole, but she also showed no remorse for her victims and will be re-eligible for parole in the year 2030. Jen Carson, who is actually Michael's daughter, is really, really outspoken about all of the horrors that her dad had partaken in. You can watch many interviews and listen to interviews of her online. That is what I did to gather a lot of the information in this case. She really, really talks about her childhood with her dad and everything like that. And um, she says that she believes that Susan and Michael are still very dangerous. She is happy they are both in jail and they are not eligible for parole at this time. And she has even described her father as being pure evil. I couldn't find any interviews or anything like that from Susan's two sons, which leads me to believe that they kind of kept out of the public eye with this and kind of kept to themselves, which you can't really blame them for. But I can't even imagine what must have gone through all three of these kids' minds after finding out what their parents were capable of. It is just absolutely crazy to me, especially because they describe James as being very, very normal. In his early life, his first wife said that their relationship was pretty normal until it started to fall off, but I couldn't really find how it started to fall off and the strange behavior that he was giving off. But before all of that happened and before her and Jen left, it seemed that their marriage and their entire life was pretty seemingly normal. But guys, that brings us to the end of this video. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below what you'd like to see in my future videos. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos from me. Thank you so, so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.